Hello everybody, I'm Dutch, and if you like hiking tips, fun adventures, and great gear, hit like and subscribe to join my vlog journey. And if you'd like to be notified when we upload a new video, click that bell as well. All right, let's go. Hello everybody, I'm Dutch, and there's one thing that you really need when you go backpacking, and that is a backpack. And well, I love backpacks. As you see, I got a lot of them. Today, what I want to do is take a deep dive into it, show some of the features, the packs that I got, what I like, what I don't like. For the most part, I don't even know that I've found the perfect pack yet. Some of them have nuances that I think are great. And then they got this one thing that I'm like, oh man, I wish it didn't have that, make that noise when I walk or, or had a bigger mesh pocket or stuff. So let's get into it. So when it comes to backpacks, generally I like the one large cavity design uh, hip belts. Um, really want to give credit to ULA because I think they were the first ones to put pockets on, on the hip belts, but I need a hip belt. I'm not going to be just going putting all that weight on my shoulder. I do like there to be some type of frame, even on my lightest of trips. I still like a frame on my backpack. Then I need side pockets and I need a large mesh pocket in the back. The reason I need a large mesh pocket is because there's things that I keep out there that I don't mind get wet and I don't want to be putting them in with my dry stuff. Tarp, tree straps, rain gear, all those items. For me, it is a must that they have to have a place on the back of my backpack. Some other features are, can I run a water bladder with it? I don't run a water bladder as much as I used to, but um, that's gonna be one of the things that I'm gonna look at. And I want it to be simplistic. I want a big bag that I stick all my stuff in and really that's it. If there's a lot of zippers on it, that's a bad thing. If there is a whole lot of pockets that I have to go through to find where my knife is, that's a bad thing. So I know there's ways around that, but simple is better. There's one pack here that is not simple and I still love it. I don't take it too much because it's not simple, but I still love the design and everything that went into it. Let's really get into it. I really wanna get into the intricacies of some different companies that I really like. So first one I want to talk about is ULA and I bought my first ULA um, it was my very first I, it might have even been my very first backpack and it was certainly was my first really good one that, that I'm getting that's domestically made designed just for me and I bought it for my through hike let's grab it this one has more miles on it than probably all of my other packs combined I'm gonna probably say this one is my favorite Unfortunately, it is worn out. I wish I could get another, but this is the ULA P2. And it is, back then, Brian Frackle owned the company and he would custom make this for you. So you could get your trail name on it. If you, if you wanted the hip belt pockets, he put them on there. It was really made for you. I don't think they do that as much anymore. I honestly, I haven't purchased off them in quite a long time. This pack was just amazing on my through hike. There's a few things that I didn't care for on it, but they are pretty tiny. It has compression straps on the sides. And what that means is that if my load is getting light, I can go and I can pull this real tight and it's gonna keep it nice and close to my back. It has a frame sheet and then there's a bar, an aluminum bar that runs down through there. So I got good padding on the back side of this. And then the aluminum bar is gonna transfer that weight and it goes down into your hip belt. And that is so important because your shoulders are gonna get tired. I always felt the shoulder straps, he could have put a little bit more work into it. I really like 3D mesh on the inside. I don't know why, maybe that helps move away the sweat. This uses the same fabric back here, which is a knit, and I guess it wicks away moisture, but it wouldn't be doing it like the 3D mesh where you got all those airy pores in between it. It is not much padding on these shoulder straps. I like the shape of it. I really wish it had more padding. And I can tell you from making my own backpacks, this is a very difficult part to make. So I understand why, especially when he was starting out, that this was a little bit of a shortfall. So it has a load lifter. I've learned to appreciate load lifters. And this one is an adjustable one. So you can put this where you want. Then you have the adjustment of how tight it's gonna be. But to see that I could move this 
down this piece of webbing and then it's pulling in a different place. This I like to keep at the very top of my shoulder and then this pulls this closer on here, really pulls up on that. The webbing does not continue. I'm not certain about that. I'm feeling in here and, and maybe the webbing does continue in there. But to me, that is really important because webbing is stronger than what fabric is. And this area is getting a lot of stress, repeated stress. And one of the things I always look on a pack, is this place gonna fail right here? I will say this thing has well over 3000 miles on it. And the only real failure I have on it, well, there was a couple. One, I wore through or, or I dug a hole into this mesh backing. You can see a couple other places. I've taken this thing to car washes and sprayed it down so I could try to get all the salt out of it. The lamination on the, and I found out what caused it, but it started to be polyurethane coating started to come off. And it, this happened during my through hike and I didn't know why. And I contacted Brian and he did not know why either, but I finally did find out why. Turns out DEET takes away at least this urethane coating. And the reason I know this is because the pocket that I keep my uh, DEET in also very much, it just totally peeled off, which leaves you with nothing but fabric that has no waterproof protection. So it's not really a good thing. The place that I really had it bad it wasn't so much on this Dyneema reinforced fabric, but it totally delaminated off of the inside of the extension pocket. Kind of see that right here where there's a little bit left, but e even what's left has a lot of cracks in it. I know what caused this. What caused this is I hate black flies and I hate black flies attacking the back of my head. So I would spray deep just in sheer anger and panic trying to keep black flies because I can outrun a mosquito. I cannot I'll run a black fly. So this had gotten coated in DEET and DEET is not good for a lot of plasticky things and apparently urethane. So this totally lost its waterproofness on the extension collar. I think it retained it on there. Generally the extension collar got pushed in. The only time I'd be really using extension collar is when I would be heading out of town. It was really nice to have that extension collar because when I'd be heading out of town, I would be completely full. A lot of my foods particularly as I got a little bit further down the trail, I uh, became fluffy because I really started to crave fresh food. So a pack of bagels would often be in there. Uh, cucumbers, I, I, for some reason I had a hankering for cucumbers, which is probably not very practical. I did eat them the, f the very first day, but fresh vegetables would be something that I would always be looking to buy when I get, when I get into town. So it was great to have this extension collar. It's different than the way I've seen most companies do it today. And I really like it because you can go and put it up there and you can cinch this shut and then you just cinch this around. It kind of holds it in place. The mesh pocket, by my standards, this is extremely small. I really like to have as big of a mesh pocket. I'm gonna go into this more on every backpack. It's, it's how I judge a backpack is how big the mesh pocket is. Like I said, I wanna keep my rain gear. I wanna keep my straps. I wanna keep my tarp in here. And my tarp, I really prefer to only keep it in its tarp sleeves, which does not compress it down like you do in the stuff sack. But I, I wanna leave the stuff sack home. I just wanna stick the, the whole sleeve and everything in there. First thing I judge on a backpack is I look at this back mesh pocket. And this one is quite small. A feature on here, there's two features down here at the bottom that I really love, all right? These straps coming around here, when I don't have these on a backpack, I tend to put them on there. Now, I used a Z-Rest when I through hiked and that lived here. And when I put it on there, it made it so that my backpack had a kickstand. So when I sat down, it was almost like a tripod with the Z-Rest sitting down here and it didn't fall over quite as easily. It still fell over sometimes, but it was better. But the Z-Rest did not have to stay dry. I also kept a Tyvek sheet in with that and that's bulky. So it was really great to be able to stick it to the outside. I have never seen a backpack do this before. Maybe, maybe somebody else can tell me of another brand that does this, but this is a pocket it on the bottom of your backpack and then it has the pack cover already attached. This did a couple things for me. One, it made it so the bottom of this backpack was super strong. There's um, a double layer down here and it kept it that much more waterproof when I'm setting down my, my pack on the damp ground. And, and then of course there's this sill nylon that was in between it. I really felt like, and look at the bottom of this backpack. This thing has been taken off and just dropped on many of surfaces, concrete, whatever. And it's the newest looking part of the backpack, but it's attached down here. Now I can remove it if I want to, but what this meant was that when I am hiking, I would be able to reach behind me pull that thing out and put it around 
without taking off my backpack, which is really big deal because I could pop it off if I wanted to have it off because I want this stuff to dry if the sun's shining, but in sense of a quick shower or if I just want to get ready for something, um, like maybe it's going to rain, I would go and I would be able to just reach behind me. It was a little bit of a contortionist, but I would put that up there. I would show that off to everybody that, uh, hey, look, I can just put on my pack cover. It is probably a 30 denier sil nylon. It was super strong. It's the same one that came with it. It's also attached to it by these little buckles so that if it's windy, I have lost pack covers before and it won't blow off. I have a lot of backpacks to go over, so this is going to be a long one, but I won't go into them as in-depth as this one because this one happens to be my favorite. But this meant that I could go and put on my rain cover and take it off uh, freely without taking off my backpack, which is a really big deal. And it meant that I could have the rain cover off more because I wouldn't feel like I'd be hassling with it. It literally, it just gets crumbled up in there. I know pack covers aren't used as much these days as I think the backpacks become more waterproof. People are doing more seam taping. The new fabrics, the Ultra, the Dyneema are better at shedding water than even the urethane coated aerobic materials and stuff like that. I still sometimes use a pack cover because I don't want the stuff to be getting wet. I don't want the backpack to get wet because it just carries more water. It seems to roll off the pack cover more. Uh, pack covers are light. So uh, next up is these big side pockets. They're pretty darn good. They, they, are, they are very big, very deep. You can stick a smart water bottle in here and certainly your stove kit. I would often keep uh, my toiletries in there. So you see, I got one repair on here where something poked through. There is a port here for water bladder, which uh, back in the day, water bladder was what you used. It, it was water bladder or a Gatorade bottle. There is a strap that I really, I like this on my backpacks. I kind of like the Y version better, but there's a strap that's gonna come up here. It's gonna be a good compression. I'll be able to cinch this down on the inside. I'm able to remove the frame sheet that's in here, which looks like a Walmart blue pad, but it's much more firm. Um, I never did remove it. Seems like it would be difficult to put back in. Another thing that I had added to mine was this security pocket, and it has this um, good mesh in here sewn right into the hem up here. It's a zipper on it. Why I like this is because this is where I kept my wallet, and I didn't have to go digging all through my pack, and I felt like, I mean, you only pull out your wallet only when you're in town, and I felt like I'm not going to lose my wallet because it was the only thing I kept in here, and um, it, ha it has a zipper up here, and it's one of the few zipper pockets that I tolerate. There's um, two more features on here. We got the, the hip belt. I don't think ULA was as good as what they are now at making hip belts back then. It has the same pretty lame padding. And, uh, and then there's the hip belt pockets. And I don't think I would buy a backpack without a hip belt pocket these days. My headlamp stays up here. My DEET stays in here and I keep um, usually like a pocket knife and maybe my lighter would go into these. So the convenience of having that is fantastic. Sternum strap, it's adjustable. There's nothing too special about it. You are able to cinch these on the sides. I have to say that I never really, wherever they came is is how they wound up cinching. I can imagine that, that it does pull it tight. Um, you do want your backpack, well, at least I want my backpack really hugging my back. I know there's um, some that put air in between. There's even these new frames that you can buy. I, I want to keep the load. I want to keep the weight of the load too, as close to my back as possible, because the further back it is, the more leverage it's getting to pull you down. So anyhow, that is the ULA P2. They don't make it anymore. And it's a shame if they did make this pack, I would buy this pack again. It, it's probably coming in like three pounds. So it's, it's a little bit heavy, but I have a different philosophy on backpacks than I do my entire load. A backpack is meant to carry your stuff and it's meant to carry it comfortable. And if you go and you get down to a one, one pound pack, that is a rucksack, yes, you've made a light pack. And yes, you're gonna be able to go on to lighter pack and say, hey, look, I have an eight pound load, but that eight pound load might carry like 15 pounds because uh, you don't have as much suspension. You don't have the quality hip belt on it and um, or the padding on the shoulder straps. And so if your only goal is to come in on the internet with a low number on your, on your total weight, then yes, get yourself a, a super lightweight, no suspension uh, backpack. I'm looking for maximum comfort. And on that, I want a backpack that's gonna make the 12 pounds feel like eight, not the eight pounds feel like 12. All right. So while we're on ULA, I have a few more ULA packs because I'm a big fan. 
I won't go in such detail on these. Here is the CDT. And this was uh, very popular, but this is a frameless pack, or I'm gonna say it's pretty darn frameless. It just has this frame sheet back here. It still has the security pouch in here that I, I really like. And for the for the mesh, um, they went away from like the really air open and they went more like a knitted, this is a stretchy material. They did make it bigger because it covers the entire back. That's nice, but you can see by this patch that I put on here that it didn't hold up to a tent stake one time. I have these loops back here. I think these are ice axes or something crazy like that. But what I would often do is I would attach those straps. This does not come with the straps. So when they have these mesh, I don't feel like these get the airflow that the larger hole mesh gets. I also don't feel it strong as strong. So I prefer something strong with big holes in it. Here is uh, their pocket they used fabric for that. I feel like the fabric is probably stronger, but uh, it's probably a lot heavier. Here, they switched to the 3D mesh and there is more substantial. They, they did improve on this go around. Realized that, that my P2 is well over 20 years old and this one is, well, it's still well over 10 years old, but in, in that time period, they did change and I, they made great improvements. You can see the shape of this. I forget this like horse collar shape or something like that is what they're called. These loops go on here. They, that's what these D-rings are for. So you can click these on here and there's a place to hold your hand. I don't personally use them. I'm not even sure why they stayed on here. I think it's because I never really hiked for this one. This one mostly was uh, for my daughter. All right, so I'm gonna get a, a water port on here and it does come with the hip belt pockets. Hip belt does come with the, with the padding. So on here, this thing is a small P2 without a lot of the features. I don't have the, the stuff sack that goes onto it. It doesn't have the size and I've never really hiked with this one. <laughs> I only, I gave it to my daughter and I wouldn't make her carry all that much in it. Here's one that I think they got very close to making a perfect pack. And, and I definitely appreciate this one. It kind of went back a little bit more towards my PT, my P2, but to show you, so they went with compression straps, was just using this nylon cord that goes through here. I've seen a lot of companies doing this to really lighten their load. I don't know how much these cord locks really compress and hold it. So I think I might like half inch webbing on there better to really cinch things down. Maybe a couple of them that come across here. The mesh pocket, you can see they made the entire thing the mesh pocket. They stuck with the more of a fabric type of knit on there. So it's things are not gonna dry up as well. I have worn a little bit of a hole down here, but it hasn't spread too much. Stuck with these mesh pockets here, but they're not as hot. And um, today's tall water bottles, i.e. smart water bottles, they could fall out of there. You can kind of stick them underneath this yellow line, but eh, not really. And, and you certainly, it's very difficult to do that while you're hiking, take a sip and put it there. Um, and that, if I'm not gonna carry a bladder, and it seems to me like I'm moving away more from a bladder every day, then I need to be able to get a bottle in here and have it stay in here and be able to pull it out. So it's one of today's requirements on a backpack. This one has a water bladder holder. I have another one like that. Uh, they use these slick clips that, that go and snap it in place. So it's kind of nice. You can pull this out, stick your water bladder in there, and then stick it back in. This uses a frame sheet, but then, and by the way, this is the Ohm, and, and, and uh, this is, well, I think it's probably the newest one that I do own. Um, and then it has a, I believe it's a fiberglass pole. It's a big hoop that goes around here and that becomes your frame. And that goes right into the hip belts, which means that you are putting the weight of the pack onto the hip belt. Transfers from fabric, particularly on the top, goes onto there and it's going right down. And you see it goes right onto the hip belt. Not the hip belt is attached to the pack. The frame is attached to the hip belt, which is a fantastic design. We're gonna have the usual pockets. Of course, they use their 3D mesh on the inside, so they've stuck with that improvement. Hip belt pockets, can't say enough for them. And right here, I mean, I got my deep, I got my lighter in there, and that always lives in there. I wish we spent more time on the quality of hip belt buckles. It is 
one thing that I've had to replace the most on backpacks and, and it's real hassle. Like the side release, one of them breaks and the reason it's a hassle is because to find the exact same, there's so many side release buckles, to find that same one is usually pretty difficult. You can find usually the name of the company that makes it on the back side here. And this one you can, not gonna be able to read it without my glasses, but uh, this one you will see a very substantial buckle on here. And sometimes people put like two inch buckles and that's not that important. This is only using a, a one inch buckle, but I really have great confidence in this. The plastic here is substantially thick. Uh, here is always a vulnerable spot that they break. There's a guide in the middle that, I mean, it seems like it's overkill. I think if you wanted to break this, it would be very difficult. The click that I got going on there is very substantial and I feel like this thing is gonna stay buckled until I don't want it to buckle. I kind of like it when there are hip belts where there's a dual strap that comes off here and then just goes to a single point and you can tighten either one. I feel like I can get the hip belt around my hip bone better because that's really what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get it on my hip bone and like here's my bone and I want it to, to cup it on there. So if I have two points to get it onto my hip bone, I feel like it hangs up on there much more. Sometimes they have like a splitter to kind of give you a curve on that to, so it really can do that. I, I hope I have an example of that. So I just used this thing on a hike. It's I think it, it's 40 liter and I really like it. There's really one downside to this thing and it's a really shame i hope you can hear it here as i move this thing every step makes that noise drives me up the wall and it's such a fantastic pack but that hoop that they put around here trying to enjoy nature and you just hear this I also would note, they just have the fabric back here. This is gonna be absolutely no breathability. Not that there's a whole lot when there is a 3D mesh or some other type of mesh, but they went all in when you're gonna have a sweaty back on this. I'm gonna have a sweaty back anyhow, but uh, I'll say that this does not have the place to mount the pad on the back. It became less important to me since I use quilts now. And uh, these loops, I have never used them but they would be nice to hang your sticks on, your hiking sticks, but I'm always carrying them on my hands anyhow. So anyhow, that's the ohm. I got one more, one more ULA. So this is the catalyst. This thing's huge. I think it's 70 liters. Gotta move you back. This is, this one's big. So I got the one big billowing pocket. It has a rigid frame sheet here and there are two aluminum bars going down here to transfer the weight. It has basically, it has an internal frame. That is really good. Look how big this mesh pocket is. Look at how it billows. I can put a lot in there. This is gonna be my winter pack when I really am taking a big heavy load. And it's got the 3D mesh in here. It's got a very rigid frame on it. This can carry a lot of stuff and it can carry a heavy load. There are times that I do that, regrettable times. So we, we got our their usual design where they have the adjustability of where the load lifter goes to, and then you're able to adjust the load lifter. They're using the straps on the side, which I really like to compress. Now I will note that it compresses the top. I don't really see much to compress the bottom of it. So bottom part's gonna be billowing. So this is a good example where I wind up with a dual strap on the on the hip belt. So I'm able to pull this individually so that I can get this to go around my hip bone. And look at the size of this pocket because they have a bigger hip belt. It is meant for carrying a substantial amount of stuff, probably not a hundred miles. I took this one time on a 50 miler and I regretted that. It was, I thought it was gonna be an easy hike and it was not an easy hike. And well, I had this big pack. So I was like, ooh, I'm gonna bring lots of stuff and that never goes well. So anyhow, that's a catalyst and, and you can almost see an evolution that, that ULA has made throughout the years. And now that we have the, the 3D mesh totally on the back and, and the, the better, more substantial hip belts, the larger, this is a very strong mesh that, that's very plasticky, but it's gonna get more air and well, that's ULA. Okay. And here we're talking exactly what I like big bag or, or two side pockets, one big mesh pocket and hip belt pockets. And that's all I need. Let me show you one 
that I think is an absolute work of art and there are not too many of these out there. Uh, I don't even know if they still make them. And it is, you know, I told you about how simplicity and lack of pockets is important to me, um, but I can still appreciate the function of one that is much more intricate. And I'll show you that to you now. This, I think this pack weighs probably five pounds and it is the arm. This should be a video on its own. This thing, some of the things it does is just absolutely amazing. The way it's designed is amazing and I'm probably not gonna do it justice, but let's try to get through it. So one of the key features to the arm is you have pockets in the front and this is very good for keeping your water on here. So you could wear this like this, but this is really meant to cross. Notice how these pockets go right down to, see this is an aluminum bar. So the weight of this is going right into your hip belt, the stuff that's in the front. There is mesh pockets on the outside. It has compression strap to keep it in here. You got these big pockets that you can easily fit. I think you could probably put two smart water bottles in each of these. And the idea here is that it is, rather than your load pulling you backwards, this is balancing it and putting all the weight onto your hip belt and less put it so much onto your back. I, <laughs> there's a lot more features on this that I'm gonna go over, but just wearing it feels amazing. There is something on here where this, you, you totally get movement in here. And this right here allows things to totally move. And, and I've never had a pack that moved with me so much. And I'd like to say that I'm agile, but look how much pack I'm wearing. I'm wearing these big things. I tried wearing this thing in the summertime and it's just too hot. There, there is too much of lack of airflow and I finally decided that this is a winter pack. This is gonna have all these little mesh pockets that are out here on the outside, which are super nice. I think you're able to like remove these if you want to and, and go without and then you take this those same straps and it just becomes a shoulder strap and now you got a decent pack. So so if I wanted to I could just totally remove that. And I, and I do see it's got a slick clip up here and, and it's got some kind of snap connection right down here. And then this is also removable right down here. So you would totally be able to, to take these off and just use the pack as a normal backpack if you wanted to. On the normal back, very first thing I notice on here is it does not have a mesh pocket. Ugh, what a shame. Because where am I gonna put a tarp on this thing? But the best thing I can do is grab a pack back. If you haven't seen that, I'll be showing you that on one of my packs that I do use that one. But, I, you know, there's these bungees. If any pack makers are out there, cool it with these bungees. You're not really gonna stick your, I, I, I would not trust a putting my my fleece jacket or my rain jacket underneath that bungee. I wouldn't rely on it. The only way I would rely on it is if there was a loop on it and I could Caribbean to it so if it did slip off, it wouldn't totally fall off. But to me, I think that's just asking for something to fall off and you don't know it. The side pocket, it's pretty small. There's nothing to hold in on the side to, so that if I did put a tall bottle in here, of course, I would probably be wearing that on the front packs anyhow. I have added uh, these straps back here for a pad. Here's what I was trying to show you back there, that um, when you move, this goes through width, and I think they're trying to show you that on here, but you can see that although it supports it, that does slide through a channel in there, which enables it to just move with your body. Now look, like I said, this is not really my style of a backpack. There is way too much going on here. I don't even want to spend the time to cut all this stuff off of here that's on here, but I can definitely appreciate it. And well, it is gorgeous work of art in my opinion. So this is the sleeve in here. And this is, or the liner I should say. So this goes inside there and what you're gonna notice is it's got a loop in it, like a donut. And that is because inside this pack, there's this panel 
with a zipper and it zippers to the back of it and it makes it so that the pack doesn't go too far back. It's kind of the same idea of having the compression straps. I would rather have the compression straps because while I think that is a neat idea and I think it's neat because you're pulling it in the middle, you are making it very difficult to get anything bulky down here and Anaconda, forget about it. You'd be like putting stuff in and stuffing it down in there and it just makes it that much more of a hassle. I really just want a big open bag. So that is the Arn, I think this is, it's called the Freedom something or another. And it, it again, look, look at this hip belt. First of all, it's got these great locking cams that I don't see very often. That is so much better than just the ladder locks that you just pull and they slowly move. This has got a lock on there, it has a mechanical lock. There is like a rigidity to here and then there's a flexibility up here and the whole thing is made so it's breathable. When I pull the strap to cinch it tight, I'm pulling not here, I'm pulling way back into here. And Look at how well that hugs my, my hip belt because this is really rigid. They have something in here, I don't know, frame sheet or something. And, and also it's like, like a non-slip coating one in here, which, which is gonna help grab on and make it so it doesn't slide down on you. This pack is a, a bloody work of art and it's way too much stuff for me. So it doesn't see much trail at all. Here is another pack. I use this often on winter hikes but what you'll notice here, the downside of this pack is its mesh pocket. I have to have this pack back stuck to it because I need a big mesh pocket. There is something back here and I can show that to you, but I wind up carrying a pack back usually when I take this backpack out. So this is the Atmos 50. This is a very popular pack. I do like this backpack a lot and I'll show you some of the features on it. The, it does have this pocket back here. You can stick quite a bit back here. I believe you can fit your tarp, but to fit your tarp, your rain gear, and your tree straps back there would be a challenge. So I'm not getting all of my white stuff back there. And then it has these pockets that come down on the sides, which are nice, but it takes away from the interior storage and I want one big bag. I really don't need to compartmentalize things. I want to keep my bedding on the bottom and then I want to put my food and my toiletries and my electronics and, and really that's, that's all I'm carrying. And this has more pockets than items that I'm carrying. It has this like ladder lock back here and maybe someone out there knows why they made this thing so robust. I mean, obviously I can move this onto it. It's for holding poles. A lot of a lot of companies seem to, you'd want to strap your poles to your pack. If I'm carrying poles, I'm carrying them in my hands. I don't really know why there, there's so much, so much dedication to, to items on that. It does come with the great strap here on the bottom so that I can put a pad down there if I wanted to. The interior of this itself is actually relatively small and that's because you got these pockets here cutting in on your space. This is kind of done on the way. See how this isn't billowing like, like my catalyst is? My catalyst, you could totally fill this up and then you could totally fill this up. And this is not gonna take away from the interior space. This totally takes away from the interior space. Rather than pushing out, it's actually pushing in. So there's a water bladder folder in here, which I thought was great at the time, but now not so much. And then it is one large bag there, but it's really compromising on the space. This is a 50 liter pack, and I feel like I can fit a lot more in a lot of 40 liter packs than I can this. But here's a really neat feature. It has this mesh back on here, and it's gonna make it so you get plenty of airflow back there. It doesn't have anything that's gonna jab me because I'm just gonna have this very strong mesh here. And then there's these frame in here, Again, this cuts into my interior space though. I remember one time I went and I, I stopped and I got um, a couple of cheeseburgers though. <laughs> when I was hiking out of town and I had some McDonald's cheeseburgers and uh, about an hour before I got to, uh, to camp, there's an opening. You, you can unzipper this, this from the inside and I stuck cheeseburgers in there. And then by the time I got to camp, they were warm from the, the sweat of my back. So oh, cheeseburgers warmed by back sweat. Sounds delicious, doesn't it? Um, this has mesh pockets out here, which seems like a great idea, uh, except what if the stuff that you're having in there, you wanna keep dry. And also, unfortunately, this one rips. One more thing to note on this, this zipper 
it barely moves. I don't know, maybe I have to wax it or something. Not fantastic. This is a, a different type of vacuum than I've seen on anything. I'm kind of agnostic on it. I kind of think that when they're putting so much into the breathability of the back, why have a non-breathable mesh in here? Um, it did have the two part strap and it has this very substantial buckle, which, which I like, as you know, I, I really appreciate that. At the end of the day, I'm not using this pack very much. The reason is because for uh, as much as it is a 50 liter and all this intricate stuff, it doesn't hold much stuff, which is really what I want my backpack to do. Some of the features that I do like is, is this breathability and it has um, really nice shoulder straps on it. It's Osprey, they are a top of the line company, but I like stuff more, more domestic made and this is bells and whistles without space. That is the Atmos 50. So I got a special backpack that somebody made me and, and they gave me and I really like it. I really like it. There are a couple shortcomings on it. And although I'm gonna point them out, I want you to, to understand that, that I'm gonna pick on anything that's gonna have any type of shortcoming in it. And I'm, I'm supposed to bring that up and, and and I, I want to point that out. And what might not be great for me might be totally fine for somebody else. So it's just my opinion. And I don't want it to take away from the beauty of this pack. This pack is amazing in itself. A design that I think is so unique. Unfortunately, I don't see them taken off. And, and I really thought that these packs would be very, very popular. And I've, I've tried to uh, give them a shout out. I really want to give them a shout out this time too because this pack is fantastic. It's a couple years old and I've got quite a few trips on it. So, I don't know the exact name of it, but the company is PVB and they are made here in America, which I really appreciate. It's made out of Dyneema, which is also made here, which I really appreciate. Remember, Ultra, that unfortunately is not made here. And the Dyneema composite fabrics are. What's really unique about this pack is it has an external frame, just like the good old days. So you see these, there's carbon fiber that runs up here and then these strands go across the back here and they are the frame of the pack and they're super light and I don't know why companies, I mean, do you remember the old aluminum frames that were, and, and the Kelty backpack, I just saw one not too long ago and it really made me laugh. It had like vinyl for a backpack and it, it clips all to it and everybody went to internal frame to try and get light. Here is an external frame, which I really think is a superior platform for really supporting the backpack. And he made it so that it is nice and light. This company is PBD, and I believe they're out of Arizona. It's totally unique. And, and there's some of the ingenious, I can remove this this frame uh, to make this lighter if I have a, if I want to really ever go frameless. I never really want to go frameless, but you're not really saving all that much weight. You can see the, the frame out here. I don't feel the frame against my back. I never found that to be uncomfortable. It does put some 3D mesh that comes through here. So when you don't use the frame, you're having something breathable there. And also there's these uh, elastic straps in here. That way you can put a pad in here. I never felt that it was necessary. One of my favorite features is the zipper that can get into the bottom of your backpack that goes right into the chamber. And what that was told to me was that was for a, uh, keep your pistol. So you can keep your pistol bottom pack, but you can still access it without reaching through your entire pack. So, but I can imagine just keeping something else down in there, you know, maybe, maybe you keep your wallet down the bottom of your pack or something like that. Uh, let's go through some more features because he really put a lot of neat things into this. Has the, uh, the, the split cinching on your hip belt like this. So, that's promoting getting around your hip bone. There's all this daisy chain in here. This one did not come with a hip belt pocket, but you can attach a hip belt pocket and I always intend to do so. I probably still will. The hip belt is attached and not only is that carbon fiber the frame going right through here, see this? But it's also then attached to the, to the back here with uh, Velcro, so it's supporting um, the frame and the bag, and it does a fantastic job putting the weight of your backpack onto your hips, which there really should be very little weight. I try to put like 70% of the weight on my hips, 30% on my shoulders. So this does that really well. There's 
molly straps back here, which would be nice if I wanted to put another pocket on here. The mesh pocket, this is what I like. Although here again, we added the, this 16th of an inch. I should cut this off right now. There's no way I would put anything back here and held strapped to this, cinched with this little tiny cord lock, which I'm gonna assume just comes undone so easily. I'm really fussy about cord locks. So, so the, uh, I, mean, I sit there and, and I, Every single cord lock I get, I go to different type of cords and I pull them like this and I see how easy they are to move. Cord locks, they're almost all made in China. They're making them with the cheapest of materials they possibly can and the biggest case that is the spring. And the spring doesn't hold enough, particularly when they make them small like this. And like I said, please, pack makers, stop doing this. You're really not making a feature that anybody really can use. There's some more Molly straps right back here. And he also put molly straps down here on the bottom, which is nice because I could easily strap something down here to the bottom like a pad. So um, this is one large pocket here on the inside. There's nothing else in there. This is about perfect as a pack can be in my opinion. See the nice big pockets here? And then look, there's two little pockets here. So you could stick, you know, some smaller items under this mesh, but then you still got this. The depth of it is something that's going to hold a water bottle. So there's a downside on everything, and I don't want to take away from the beauty of this pack when I point out the few downsides that I do have on this. I don't have a strap compressing this thing to my back so that when my load is light, it is pulling up. I think there was something that I can wrap around from the front here that's usually clicked in the front. I don't see it in the linear. Uh, right here. This can click here, and I think maybe there's a possibility that I can, I can stick this to the back, but it's too high, and it's not going to compress right here. And what I really want to do is compress the sides because I really want the items as close form to my back as possible. So the very biggest thing, and it might be an unfounded fear, I don't like the way shoulder straps are attached to the backpack. They do not show anywhere. There's no webbing going through this at all. This piece of webbing right here, if it just continued up there, I would have so much more confidence on it. It is webbing being sewn to webbing, which is a super strong item. This is Dyneema sewn to Dyneema. Dyneema is extremely strong, but it can tear, and it's not as strong as webbing. I really wish, and maybe I should seam rip this and, and put some inch and a half webbing. Shoulder straps are actually very nice especially for somebody making this. This guy makes this, I'm pretty sure, in his basement on his own. And this is a very professional shoulder strap. I, I know that that is one of the most difficult things to make. I will also note there's no load lifter on here and they could have taken care of both those items. This one's kind of hard to load lift because you would really want the shoulder strap to be in here because you want to pull up here on the load lifter. Maybe there is a reason why you can't do that in this type of design, but I really would love to just see webbing sewn and then go into that seam. I would have a lot more confidence in this pack. As now, I really love this pack for an overnighter. I'm afraid to take it on too much more than an overnighter. Thought about taking this on my through hike for the summer months. I think in order to do that, I think I have to do something about the shoulder straps. And what a shame, because this pack is pretty perfect. I like the, the roll down tops. I like that better than cinch. Let's do some more specialty packs. This one I bought off a of Kickstarter. And it's kind of funny because it came a year after my Chameleon Kickstarter and they used the same music on their Kickstarter as my Kickstarter. And it's kind of what brought it to my attention. Plus the name of their pack is a familiar one. So they're using the same music as what we used in our video, which wasn't even picked by me. Back then somebody else made our videos and, and you know, they just, they go on the internet and they find the free music that's available. So this is by Trailform, and it's called The Chameleon. So it's called The Chameleon. It used the same music. It was a year after my chameleon and kind of had to get it. And I know why they called it The Chameleon. And I really think everything is coincidental. What I don't think is coincidental here is the, it looks awfully lot like a Mystery Ranch backpack. It looks like a Mystery Ranch clone, doesn't it? So I've never owned a Mystery Ranch. I'm a little too cheap for that. But here is a backpack that never gets used. Never, ever, ever. The gist of this backpack and the reason they call it The Chameleon is because it transforms. It is everything that I don't want in a backpack. It doesn't have a mesh pocket. It has all of these zippers. Look at this. This zipper. This zipper. This zipper. This zipper. This zipper. There's probably other zippers. Look, that's how little I've used this still. The, I've, I've never used this thing. It's got what is known as a brain. I don't usually 
use anything. Comes with a pack cover in here. I don't use the brain on, on my packs too much. But this is the idea behind this pack, is it has this extremely heavy, this is not light at all, but you probably recognize this as one of those Helinox clone chairs and this backpack, and I'm not gonna completely do it because, well, it's really pointless, but you open it up and it becomes the chair. So you go hike somewhere and then it has these internal pockets in here with yet more zippers and they unsnap and they, they sit on the side of your chair. What a pain in the butt that would be. So you go out in the woods. First of all, this thing's taken up the entire inside. This is heavier than any of the chairs that I've ever seen. This, they were like, hey, let's put no thought or into decreasing the weight of this and just make it as heavy as possible. Is it really going to be a comfortable chair? Mm, I doubt it. I think I set it up one time. But this goes inside here. Well, crap. That's half your backpack. I couldn't fit anything in here, but let's say I could fit, you know, all my gear in here. I'm going light and I want to set up my chair. So I don't know where I would uh, use this, but let's say you do go out and you set up your rig and you set up a chair. You have all of your stuff that now isn't in your backpack because you have turned your backpack into a chair. Here is definitely a case where you're trying to make one thing do two things and what you've done is you've made one thing do two things very poorly. This thing's heavy, it's not very well made. Like, look, look at the hip belt pockets. What do you keep in here, a pack of gum? It has the mesh, so it's not waterproof. And then, and then it has something here that, that not gonna keep anything dry and easily could rub through. The way these attach up here is with the piece of webbing, but these are very unsubstantial. This is just nothing but flimsy and is not gonna take any weight. There really isn't a frame in this backpack other than your chair frame, which is only gonna be weighing more. You can't fit anything into it because you're putting that chair frame inside of it and it's got all these pockets. I think I only keep this pack so that I can look at it and, and say, man, do I hate this backpack. <laughs> So never get the Trailform Chameleon backpack because it's probably the worst backpack I've ever seen in my life. I got a couple more unique ones. We're clearing off the wall, but we're, we're getting there. I appreciate my friends at Z-Packs. And here is a Dyneema backpack that was, it was actually given to me by a friend. And this is a rucksack. It is definitely a minimalist pack. It's got a lot of age in it. I've actually taken this on quite a few hikes where I want to be super ultra light. This is an example where we're trying to get light for lighter pack statistics and we're gonna make eight pounds feel like 12 pounds instead of making 12 pounds feel like eight pounds. It does have a big mesh pocket on it. The hip belt, there's no frame on here and there's nothing even substantial in between this hip belt and it's just making it so that the backpack isn't swinging around. It's not supporting really anything. The only way it's supporting something is if you make it really tight and all of your stuff in there is so firm, it's acting like a frame. It's got these, these Dyneema, I think, I don't really know the gauge this, but it feels like 5.0 Dyneema, which totally seems like overkill since this feels like 1.5 Dyneema. And you would think that, hey, I gotta make sure this doesn't rip. That's probably more important than this. It does have these side compression straps. As you know, that's, that's a good deal for me. I like the roll down on this. It is just a bag. And if you're gonna be talking, keep it simple. This is definitely keeping it simple. Might be keeping it simple, might be taking that a little bit too far, but if you wanna be light, I believe this pack is around a pound. That's how light this thing is. I'm not gonna carry very much weight in this, but it's not meant for that. Friend of mine, Jeremy, firing my bones. I hope he actually catches this, because I wanna give him a big shout out on this. This is his pack. He, he he was a hammock maker and he made some packs and he did some unique things. Um, he was making insulated hammocks before anybody. Pretty much he was one of the very first ones. Um, him and Shelter were the original insulated hammock makers. So we are all standing on the shoulders of giants and Jeremy, I have a lot of respect for him. So this was his take on an ultralight pack. It doesn't have a frame and it is super minimalist. 
it's pretty small, 25 liter maybe. The hip belts, they're not too bad. They're made out of this stretchy mesh. I, I worry a little bit about them, that that would wear a hole in for a while. For the shoulder straps, they're losing, they're using line locks with this cord. Now I will say this cord is very abrasive, so it's gonna prevent it from slipping, but I would be afraid that if I use this long time through the day, I'm gonna be pulling that down and pulling that down. I, I always get frustrated about that. For some reason, there's a lot, I think maybe you made this as more of a runner pack, like trail runner, because you'll see there's, in his webbing down through here is this uh, reflective stuff. He used reflective cord down here, although that reflective cord might be just so that it doesn't slide through the line lock. We got 3D mesh on the back side here. We don't have anything on the back side here. Um, but this pack is so small, and when you compress it, there's gonna be a lot of air to be able to get into the side. It's not gonna really be hugging you because this thing, when you stuff this thing full, winds up being more like a tube. It has two pockets here. One of them's mesh and one's here. The only thing I'll say about this is I don't know what you keep in here. I mean, I thought maybe about a towel might go in there pretty nice, but I usually just have a towel hanging off of there. And I don't know what you put in the back one, maybe your toothbrush or something. It's a long skinny pocket. Maybe somebody knows, please leave a reason down in the comments as to what the heck you would use this for. Realize that there's two pockets here. One of them is made out of Dyneema and another one is mesh. All right, so we got our, our roll top um, that comes down. And he has one other pocket on here, and it's a mesh pocket back here. And I think that's kind of neat to, to have that in here. As much as I'm not a big fan of that type of thing, and maybe I would have rather had the mesh come all the way up to the top because I want to be able to keep it. And, and you can see that there is some waste here. Oh look, there's some more reflective band here. I'm sure this is meant to be more of a runner band, but he could have started this mesh down here and gave me a much bigger mesh pocket. It's stretchy, so it's gonna billow, but I'm only putting my tarp in there. I'm not putting my rain gear, and maybe I can get my tree straps in there. Kind of has a load lifter, but they're not adjustable. So, eh, I don't really know that that's really all that function. I really appreciate this pack, to tell you the truth. And I appreciate some of the simplicity in it and some of the features. Unfortunately, I have to do something about the hip belt because I am bigger than the hip belt. And really, this, this should be longer. This is meant for someone skinnier than me. Maybe one day I'll get skinnier. All right, wall's getting cleared off. Bear with me. Here's an Osprey, same thing, big pocket here. This is 22 liter. This is what I would consider to have this good breathability, but it doesn't use that like flex frame and it's not rigid, uh, or at least not metal rigid, but it does have that type of frame in here. You are gonna get a lot of breathability on here on all this. Actually, I picked this up at the outdoor retailer show and there's not too many trips that I could go backpacking with this. It's not gonna hold too many days of food or anything, but it does have a big, big enough side pocket here. I like the compression straps here. Again, everybody wants me to hold my poles back here. I think this is to hold a helmet. This might be more of a, a bicyclist. So it does have a pocket within here for a wallet, which I certainly appreciate. We got load lifters, great breathability. This, whatever this foam is in here, they're putting that up through here. And, and then there's this O-ring here, and I never really figured out what the, that O-ring was for. And it does come with some type of pocket here. Uh, this is much like, much like Jeremy's, where there's a long skinny pocket that eh, I don't really understand what that's for. I'm not putting my cell phone in there. And it does have the hip belt pockets. Ooh, look, there's something in here. Maybe there's a headlamp. Uh, not a headlamp. I love it when I go through a backpack and I score. Score an old headlamp I thought I lost. Actually, this next one is not mine. It's actually uh, my daughter's that she's gonna be using for her through hike. This, this was a gift to her. Paul, man. Paul, I love you, all right? You're such a generous man. So, hyper light. I, would, I think they have got to be one of the most popular through hiker packs out there. And there's a lot to like about Hyperlight. I have one conflict. They moved their production to Mexico. And I know a lot of people don't care that much about that, but I do care about that. However, I still may be using a Hyperlight backpack because they're fantastic backpacks. And let's go through this one. I think this is a 40 liter, maybe 50, maybe 50 liter. I wish they made this back and they are tenors, they make tents. So they don't have to be putting a tarp back in here and they don't put tents back in here, that's for sure. So they don't understand my love for mesh pockets. I want a big mesh pocket. You missed an opportunity because it didn't come up to here. And that's how far I wanted to come up to. But I guess they're trying to make it be continuous 
with their side pocket, which is a nice, generous side pocket. You got the compression straps. They know what they're doing. They seriously <laughs> know how to make a backpack. They got really good shoulder straps on here. Um, it's not 3D mesh, but it is a, a wicking fabric, and I feel it's gonna be really strong. Sometimes 3D mesh, like pine needles get in it and stuff, and you can't get them out once they get inside it. So there's not a lot of adjustability on this, so you have to get this to the size that you are, and if you are, are not getting it sized right, um, you're gonna regret it. They use a lot of this Robic. Um, I think this is 210 denier. Oh. Score headlamp. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna tell you something. My daughter is the loser of headlamps. You give her a headlamp and you're like, never gonna see that again. So anyhow, this pack's pretty perfect. One big pocket, big mesh pocket, side compression straps, good substantial shoulder straps. I am very surprised to see there's no load lifters on here. Wow, that's a surprise. Hip belt pockets, I think they're a great design. They're, they're utilizing all of the space. It is a waterproof zipper, it's a waterproof pocket. Why would you not want this pocket to be waterproof? It's on the outside. Stuff inside there, do you really want it to get wet? Generally not. I, I don't know why so many companies are making these pockets out of mesh. It's not strong. It takes a lot of abuse as you're walking. Brush can be going up against there. When you set it down, it's being, it's being put onto rocks or beside rocks or concrete. So it's getting a lot of abrasion and I don't want my candy bar to get wet. So might as well put it in, into a waterproof pocket. It happens to have this phone holder. This is an accessory and I've seen others. I like hype lights, probably the best. Wish they made it in America. One more feature on here that I really like. And um, the roll down has two straps up here. I think they do that because they tend to put uh, a tent up here on the shoulders. Um, I did notice there's nothing down here for putting any type of a uh, pad on the bottom. And I think that's kind of a missed opportunity not to have at least little buckles here so you can put some straps on there. Um, they got one of these loops, which again, I think is an ice axe loop. I, I really don't see that many hikers with ice, ice axes, but maybe it's because of part of the country I'm in. And then um, th this Y has a neat feature to it. For some reason, you can undo one side of it. And then this is free floating. I haven't figured out why that is, but I have a feeling that it has a very good reason. Inside, it is very wide up here at the top, which is really nice. The next one I'm gonna show you is even here in the bottom of this. And, and then there's gonna be maybe three other stuff sacks. One of them has my food, one of them has my toiletries, and the other one has like electronics. In, in with that one, one of those is gonna have my first aid kit. And that's pretty much, that's all I'm gonna carry. Um, I will notice there's a, there's a mesh pocket here for carrying a water bladder. And then they have these aluminum, they have a dual aluminum just like the Catalyst does, coming down and going right to where your hip belt is. Hyperlite knows how to make backpacks. I wish they made them in America still. I know they make some of their stuff, but I believe that it is less and less. And as you know, I really like American made gear. A little rant on that is, I know that even some of these things, although the Dyneema used in this was made in America, but we buy so much that is from overseas, particularly Asia. But the more that we move here, um, particularly in like the textile world, in the 80s, so many textiles was made here in America. My, my grandmother worked in a, in a uh, sewing factory. And as those sewing factories closed down. It didn't just close down the sewing factories, but it also closed the mills that made the fabric. So why would you make the, the fabric if you're going to just go ship it over to um, Cambodia or China? So the more that we go and we make here, the more we will make here, if that makes sense, because the supply chain then all becomes closer. And I am a big proponent on made in America, particularly um, on my gear, because this is done by hikers. And when you have something that's put in love and passion, some of the stuff like that pack that I showed you by Fire My Bones, I mean, he has a lot of passion towards making that pack and he had plenty of thought as he was walking down the trail as to what he wanted in a backpack and that's why it's so fun. 
So the person that is over in Asia or even Mexico, Mexico to me is not as bad because the supply chain is closer. I think it's it's not advantageous to purchase off, uh, particularly a country that does not buy off of us at all. And we are much better trading partners with Mexico. But well, I'll finish this rant saying that anything that, that is, is keeping the supply chain here is only gonna be good for everybody here in the long run. And maybe, maybe your job didn't go overseas, but the person that um, would be buying off of you, their job may have gone overseas. So in a way, yes, your job did go overseas. So, all right, like I said, ran over, sorry. This one is probably mine. Exact same, same pack, except this is a 70 liter. I know it is a big pack, it is a heavy pack. It doesn't, it's gonna have a, um, doesn't have a mesh pocket. And I think that's a shame but I bought this used because I'm cheap. And I do know that this is gonna be strong, but this will hold my tarp. It is pretty billowing and I really like this. I like their, their new Unbound series as uh, friends of mine have been carrying that. The, the hip belt pocket is, is big and huge. This is really the same as that one, only if I really wanted to, I could cut this down and I would have a, I think this is a 50 liter, and I would have a 50 liter. Um, but I'm opting for a larger pack for when I start my through hike because I'm starting in January and um, I'm going to have camera equipment to do the, doing the vlogging. I'm going to need the larger pack. You, if you can keep everything inside your pack, that's better. All right. Last one is kind of not a backpack. It's more like a hip pack. And I saw this, I thought it was a unique idea. And uh, I use this not really much for anything that would be considered a long distance overnighter. Uh, maybe something just to go to go out really quick in the woods, but um, that, that is this hip, hip pocket. And this thing, although it just rides on your hips, you'll see there's no shoulder strap. There is some type of shoulder strap. I haven't used this thing in so many years. I don't know that I ever would. Yeah, see, it, it does have this. Um, one, this is a mountain smith pack that, that does attach to, there's some kind of attachment point on here and, and you click onto it. Ah, here we go. So what you can do, and then it's supposedly is some type of a shoulder bag, but you can then strap it to you. You have like one strap that's here. It, it's going to help support it. The actual, the only time I've ever taken this thing backpacking, and I think it's, well, I don't even know if it'd be neat for trail running. I can only imagine if you put any kind of weight in here, if you're good trail running, it's going to be bouncing down. And the weight of this thing is probably as heavy as my Hyper Light 70 liter. So it's not that you're going to have a, a lightweight thing. It's just kind of a, a small, unique item. And um, and it does have the, the straps here that I could put something on the bottom of it, such as a pad. Again, cool with these bungees. This one's even more ridiculous because it doesn't even zigzag around it. The one time I did use this pack and it worked really well for it was I went and I took a heavy snow trip and I used a polk sled and I attached the polk sled to these D-rings. So this made a great harness that pulled the poke sled. And I think I added these D-rings to it, as a matter of fact. Yeah, it sure looks like that. And it looks like my handiwork. Then it became something where I keep all my accessories in here. I didn't have to go back to my poke sled. I didn't have to disconnect my poke sled in order to reach back here and maybe get my water bottle or something like that. Anyhow, it's a Mountain Smith pack and I thought it was unique. As I look at my big pile of backpacks, <laughs> I might have a problem. <laughs> and I still think I'm looking for um, another backpack to hike with for my through hike coming up. So I would love to take my own if I could just stop that squeaking. And Hyperlite is definitely the 70 liter. I'm pretty much set on that's what I'm gonna start with. But as soon as I get through the Smokies, I'm getting rid of that. And then I gotta know what I'm going with from there. Might go with the PBD. And well, other than that, I might have to buy it. I might have to buy another backpack. So leave me a message. Tell me what, what you think is great features on a backpack. This is something that I've given plenty of thought to as I've been hiking down the trails to what I really like in a backpack and, and the features. All of these have got some pretty good miles on them. And 
and I, I really feel like I've vetted a lot of them out. I hang them here in my conference wall. This is, this is made it look like uh, the inside of a shelter in here. And, and when, I, when I bring in people for a job interview, they think that I, I make backpacks because they see all the backpacks on the wall. But I wanted to look like the inside of a shelter, like everybody hangs up their, their packs on there. So, well, tell me what you think. What's the best backpack? What is the absolute best backpack out there? And why is it the best backpack? Because I am still shopping for the ultimate backpack. Even with this three foot high pile sitting beside me, I still don't know. Thank you, everybody. Well, thanks for joining me on that adventure. And be sure to check out some of my other playlists. And of course, check out DutchWarGear.com for some of the greatest hiking gear on the planet. As always, thank you, everybody.